What I want to do is prove that A, B, C, F. So let's see if we can just highlight that for you. I'm going to try and prove that that figure there, uh, C, F, um, sorry, A, B, G, F. I'm mistaken when I wrote it down. So let's just go back. It's A, B, G, F is a cyclic quad. Okay, so that green highlighted one. Now I think that the minute I see the shape that I'm trying to prove is cyclic has got these crisscrosses in it, then I tend to try and go for that third one, which means try and get a line segment subtending two angles that are equal. Okay, so let's just recall what we know about G3. Do you remember G3 was X plus Y? Okay. So, let's just set that up quickly. We said that B4 was equal to X because we were given it. We said that B3 was equal to Y because we were given it. We then said that G3 was equal to X add Y because we had an isosceles triangle because we were given that BA was equal to GA. Okay, now, let's see if you can see the way I'm thinking. If this angle here is x plus y, if I could prove this angle here, also x plus y, then I would be finished with my problem. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and replicate that situation. I know that this is x plus y. And what I ideally would like is that that's also x plus y. So let's now focus on this angle here. Okay. Now let's have a look at how that angle is formed. And I often find that in a geometry rider, it's best for me just to take a snapshot and take the whole and just reduce it into just a piece of the problem. I'm wanting to find out something about that angle there. All right, can you recognize that it's the exterior angle of a very easy triangle? So that angle would equal that one added to that one. Okay, so angle one here would equal number two added to number three. So let's go and see if we can make sense of that. So F1 would have to equal E2 added to B3. Now, what do we know about E2? Well, we filled in from a while ago that it's X, okay, because of the tan chord theorem. What do we know about B3? Well, it's Y. So, if we want F1, it's going to be made up of X plus Y. Now, isn't that great news? Now, we know that this is X plus Y. Now, can you see that what I've got? Is this guy's x plus y? This guy's x plus y? And so I've got the ideal set of circumstances for proving that the quad is cyclic because I've got a line segment subtending equal angles on the same side of it. So let's impress the examiner and write out exactly what we know. So we're going to say, but. And of course, but is such a small word, but it's a big word because it actually tells your examiner that you're thinking. You're feeding them some more information. So, but. I know B4 is equal to E2, which is also X, because of the tan chord theorem. Okay, and I hope that you can follow my writing there. Okay, and so now I'm feeding them some more information. And I know that F1 is equal to E2 added to... Back up the top there, if you just remember, that's B3. Because of the exterior angle of a triangle. 
And so therefore I know that F1 is also X plus Y. So we might have got a little bit lost. So we need to pull it all together and show the examiner what we're talking about. So now we're going to say therefore G3 is X plus Y is equal to F1. And therefore my quad is cyclic. And now just be careful please. The reason is the one thing that trips up most candidates. A lot of candidates write angles, same segment. All right, now think about that and find out if you would have written that. Is it angle, same segment? Well, no, it's not, because that is the reason that we use when we're given the circle and we read off that those angles are equal. We are actually using this fact to prove that a circle can be drawn around the cyclic quad. So in fact, it's not angles in the same segment. It is the converse of angles in the same segment. Okay, now many schools actually don't like this, and that's absolutely fine. But what they do prefer is for the candidate to actually say which line segment was doing the, the subtending of the equal angles. So they prefer their candidates to write AB is subtending equal angles on the same side of it. And so that means that the actual reason in those candidates' um, portfolios would read um, line segment AB subtends equal angles. Okay, I hope that that's refreshed your memory as far as grade 11 geometry is concerned. Keep this frequency clear. Keep this frequency clear.